All right, here we are on this Tuesday evening. We are back with Weather for Weather Geeks. Air quality concerns back in our forecast for Wednesday. It's been a couple of weeks since we talked much about the wildfire smoke, but we'll have plenty to say about it in this video. In the meantime, today did not feel like June the 27th. Our average high is 82. Our high today just 71. It was nowhere near the coolest June 27th on record. That was 60 degrees. I believe that record was from the late 1800s, one of our older temperature records. Our most consistent temperature records for our area go back to 1930, roughly, but there are a handful of years in the late 1800s that we have some, uh, some weather records for, and I believe that today's record low max, in other words, the coolest high temperature, is uh, one of those dates back in the late 1800s. So it was not a very warm day today, but it was a muggy day and a damp day. Showers have been coming and going, and dew points have been mostly in the uh, kind of the muggy category, at least for most people. Uh, above 60 is kind of that magic threshold, generally speaking, in our part of the country at this time of the year, especially once it gets above 65. That's when it really becomes uh, downright humid and kind of uncomfortable. But good news ahead, drier air will be making inroads over the next 24 hours. We'll get a nice little treat on our Wednesday in terms of the moisture content of the year with dew points dropping into the 50s. That is the good news. The bad news is, boy, no doubt, well, maybe you've seen some of the, uh, I should say, some of the uh, pictures and video from, say, Chicago today. Uh, the wildfire smoke roughly as thick and as problematic as it was in New York City a couple or a few weeks ago. Not just Chicago, but Milwaukee, parts of Michigan, where, where you see this kind of dull dullness right here in the satellite picture. That's wildfire smoke. So the smoke is coming in like this right now. And the problem for us is this is forecast to shift east as we go into the day tomorrow. The air quality in Chicago today is some of the worst in the world for a few hours. And unhealthy air quality extends into Ohio this evening as far east as Lima, Toledo, and Columbus, Dayton area as well, even as nearby as... Akron, Canton, Cleveland, Erie, PA. The air quality is now in that orange category, unhealthy for sensitive groups. It's possible we're going to get into this red zone by tonight and into tomorrow in our television viewing area as this wildfire smoke pushes east. Now, I'm expecting the overall concentration of the smoke to be a little bit lower by tomorrow afternoon as compared to out in Chicago and adjacent places this afternoon. That being said, as we learned a couple of weeks ago, this is kind of tricky business modeling wildfire smoke. It's it's tough to do and sometimes it doesn't behave as some of the modeling would suggest, but we'll take the modeling with a grain of salt, but we'll show you that, yeah, it's forecast to be fairly thick, this near surface smoke tomorrow. I just showed you an animation showing the overall, what we call vertically integrated smoke in the atmosphere above our heads. This graphic shows the smoke that is forecast by the modeling to be close to the surface, and that's definitely more problematic. When the when the smoke stays well aloft, it makes for a hazy, milky sky, a red sunrise, sunset, but it's generally not a problem in terms of air quality and uh, a hazard to people's health. But when the smoke, of course, is lower in the sky and closer to us here on the ground, it can be more of an issue, and some of the modeling would suggest that for a time tomorrow, especially morning and midday, that near-surface so smoke may be pretty thick. So worst case scenario tomorrow we get into kind of that uh, code red territory in terms of uh, uh, the air quality forecast and that means even sensitive folks or I should say even healthy folks in addition to those who have uh, sensitivities, uh, respiratory issues, things like that, but even relatively healthy folks should restrict outdoor activities tomorrow. You can be outside but you probably want to restrict the amount of huffing and puffing and heavy exertion that you'll be doing outside tomorrow. Uh, again, especially if you're in one of those groups that uh, you know we, we, we call a sensitive group, folks with asthma, things like that. But again, even, even healthy folks, maybe a good idea to take it a little bit easy outside on Wednesday. The uh, air, air quality alerts have already been issued for all of Western and Central PA and a lot of Northern Ohio. Now this does not cover our Ohio counties technically, but it might as well. Uh, the forecast is just about the same in those counties as it is elsewhere across the area. So again, something we'll be watching tonight, the progress of the smoke, how concentrated will it be as most people get up and around tomorrow morning. Best case scenario, it stays mostly aloft. It's a hazy day. We've seen a few of those, a handful of those really, this summer. Worst case scenario, the smoke wants to hug the ground and uh, we have some pretty unhealthy air quality across our area. In the meantime, showers have been coming and going today. As expected, we did not have 
the kind of li- lightning and thunder and loud storms that we had yesterday, the showers will dissipate before the evening is through. Aside from the, the, the haze and the smoke tomorrow, we're expecting a relatively cl- cloud-free sky by the second half of the day. And into tomorrow night, the sky will be free of clouds for the most part. Interesting times ahead and difficult forecasts ahead by the end of the week and the weekend. We're going to get into a pattern where complexes of storms may form over the Midwest and then make the trip east. Where exactly they make the trip will go a long way towards you know how the weather is going to be flavored around here at the end of the week and into the weekend. This initial cluster on Thursday during the daylight hours is very likely to miss us to the south and to the west. This could threaten Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Louisville, places like that uh, during the daylight hours Thursday. As we get into Thursday night, very early Friday, there may be another complex that tries to go across the uh, Great Lakes. This run of the model does not show a whole lot, but it's possible we get a shower or storm by late Thursday night into Friday morning. We'll also, I think, be threatened by the occasional shower and storm as we head towards uh, Friday, Friday night, Saturday, Saturday night, probably Sunday into Sunday night as well. All these rain chances in our current forecast are, you know, they're not through the roof because confidence is low as to where these different complexes will trek. You know, this is a pattern we get into sometimes in the summer season. It's tricky business. You get this ridge of high pressure in the south and you get kind of a ring of fire effect where you get weather disturbances in the flow on the northern periphery of that heat dome, if you will. And the even the short-term modeling tends not to do very well with these. We tend to have surprises, in other words. Um, sometimes storms track over areas that the models had no idea they would. And so we've got to keep our guard up for the end of the week and into the weekend. I, I don't see a washout coming, but I think it's possible we're going to have you know threats of showers and storms, perhaps at some pretty inconvenient times for your outdoor plans at the end of this week and into the weekend as well. In the meantime, under that heat dome, of course, it's crazy hot and uh, you know, dangerously hot in places like Dallas and New Orleans, places uh, along the Gulf Coast region especially. Uh, this pattern will stick with us probably through the end of the weekend. So stay tuned on that. Be prepared for the possibility that your weekend outdoor plans could be impacted by some showers and storms here and there, but I think there'll be plenty of dry intervals as well. Temperature-wise, we'll see a little bit of a retreat on Sunday after temperatures bounce into the middle and upper 80s by Friday and Saturday. But that retreat is brief. I think by the 4th of July and into the following pardon me, a few days, uh, we're going to be on the warm side. Mid-90s, no. Um, but well up into the 80s, yes. Our average highs over the next 10 days go from 82 to their climatological peak of 83. We'll spend a lot of July with an average high temperature, a 30-year average of 83. And so a day that's three, four, five degrees or so above that means, yeah, we're well up into the 80s. So if you have some time off planned adjacent to the 4th of July holiday next week, you know, it's too early to talk a lot of specifics about rain chances, although right now it looks pretty dry for the 4th. Uh, we are pretty confident that it's going to be a pretty toasty week overall. Nothing crazy unusual for f- the first week of July, of course. All right, that'll do it for me on Weather for Weather Geeks this evening. Thanks for uh, watching this longer video. We'll catch you back here on Wednesday.